<clears throat> we locked in, y'all. How y'all doing out there, man? I'm your host, Moshe Canty. It's good to have y'all on board with us, man. I'm here with the esteemed guest, my brother Jalil Mutakim. Salam alaikum, my brother. Walaikum assalam, Ramatullah. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak to your audience and hopefully inspire them to uh uh to become more active than they than they are, you know, in, in the capacity in which they are. We need to strategize and really um unify our capacity to really have an impact in on our communities and then and on the prison industrial complex, uh what we call the penal slave system. Uh, and so what I'm doing today, and hopefully is introduced to your audience, uh, a campaign uh, here in New York State, and uh, hopefully elicit their support. Because without their support, uh, you know, the, the, the efforts will be, um, you know, less than negligible, right? But with their support, it will be impactful. Uh, we can really make things happen here, not only in New York State, but across the country. And so I'm, uh, I'm and to be honest with you, I'm dependent upon your audience, bro. I'm depending upon your audience uh, to be engaged, to, to join this effort, right? To help me help us, right? And so that we can all can help each other in the work that needs to get done. Yeah, and I'm, and that's a great, great, great opportunity for us to kind of segue into this video. And then we kind of can expound upon that. Give me one second, everyone. I will say, Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass, that's a legacy there of abolitionists. A legacy of abolition, abolishing, abolishing slavery. However, in 1865, when they established the 13th Amendment, there was an exception clause, exception clause in the 13th Amendment, right in the Constitution, that allows for prisoners to be slaves of the state. Two cases: Rutgers versus Commonwealth, and also Jones, North Carolina versus Jones. Informs us it's on the book. It's on the book. It states that prisoners are slaves other states so what we have to do right we know that one of the things that they've done in terms of, of, of abolishing chattel slavery they stated that individuals people cannot hold other people as slaves in the chattel slavery but they knew money was involved they knew money was to be made from keeping people in these kind of conditions and so what they did is that well people can hold people as slaves but the state can hold people as slaves the state can hold people as slaves. So you can the exception wrong. That's what we're confronting today. Right? 167 years later, we're still in the fight. The same fight that Black Republic was in. The same fight that Harold Keller was in. The same fight that John Brown was in. This is our fight today. To end penal slavery here in New York and across this country. We understand that in terms of penal slavery, the how it impacts our community at large. Why? Because they unite our people inside the incarcerated workers, the kind of skills that they need to have when they come out, when they transition back into the community, they become an asset to the community rather than a continual liability. <clears throat> yeah, and you know, hey, Mikey, what's going on, my brother? <laughs> How you doing, Jalil? What's going on, hey, bro? Hey, bro, doing the work, man. You know what I'm saying? That's right. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. So, so those those are some powerful words right there. So, you know, it, it, first give us some backdrop. I see that you're standing on on, on some staircase, on, and you also have people around you. Right. Um, and you're, right. you're you're standing there, you know, speaking about ending prison slavery. So, give us some backdrop about you know the event itself. Um, yeah. and, and, and some of those words that you spoke about. Okay, v very good. <clears throat> As some of you may know, I'm I'm employed by an organization called uh, um, um, Citizen Action of, State of New York. Right, Citizen Action of New York does a lot of good work. It's a nonprofit, but does a lot of good work in terms of challenging the laws and institutions and the culture of uh, oppression here in, uh, in New York State. And, and that's regards to the issues of education, healthcare, housing, and mass incarceration. On uh, uh, the 13th of uh, this month, uh, they had a, uh, a launching of called 13 Forward. Let me put this up here so you can get a look at, at this paper right here, right? <clears throat> called 13 Forward, right? And uh, 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 the campaign is a national campaign. However, in New York State, we are challenging the state constitution 
and also to enact three laws. There you go, my brother. Thank you. And now in order to enact three, uh, two laws that are pending in the legislature. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, I'm asking several things, and I'm going to talk about this in, in certain depth, but I'm going to ask uh, cer certain things of, of your audience. Right. Okay. So I'm involved with an organization called uh, Citizen Action of uh, New York. I am the special projects coordinator for Citizen Action. Right. And the goals that we're trying to do 13 forward is to end penal slavery in New York State. Now, there's two bills that's pending. Two bills is pending right now, right? Uh, uh, <clears throat> and I'm going to read what, what they state, okay? Uh, the New York State Legislature has pending two specific bills in the Crime and Corrections Committee that addresses this issue. Assembly Bill A3142 and Senate Bill S3082 and Compulsory Labor Act. It, quote, prohibits involuntary employment of prisoners related to prohibiting involuntary employment of prisoners, provides that no prisoner shall be compelled to provide labor against his or her will by actual force, threats or pattern, threats of force, threats of punishment, threats of legal coercion, or any other scheme, plan, or pattern intended to cause the person to believe that if such person did not provide such labor, that such person or another person will suffer serious harm and physical treatment. So that's compulsory labor bill, the incompulsory labor. As you well know, they enforce us to have at least two or three modules while we're inside, right? No matter what the job may entail, they enforce us to do so. If you don't go to work, then you got to sit in the cell for 23 hours a day. Not only that, but it may impact your disciplinary record, but it also may impact your opportunity to get out on parole, right? If you don't do the work that they tell you to do. That's false labor. And because in international law, national law, you cannot compel people to go to, to, to work, especially if they don't want to work or they have other jobs, other jobs and things that they want to do. For instance, like attend education programs, as an example, right? Although that may be a module, we know that at some point in time, you have to do some work, right? And they compel you to do the work, right? And it's the threat, it's the coercion uh, or a threat of being disciplined for not going to work, for not taking one of those modules, all right? Okay, the second bill is this here. Second legislative bill, Assembly Bill A3481B and Senate Bill S4116A, which established, and I quote, establish a New York State Prison Labor Board to create, monitor, and enforce an equitable rehabilitative system of prison labor, abolishes penal servitude by prohibiting the forced labor of incarcerated individuals, provides fair wages and treatment of incarcerated individuals, prohibits the use of labor of incarcerated individuals uh, for earning which inure to the benefit of the state of New York. I mean, somebody making money that benefits the state, okay? Or making uh, uh, products that benefit the state. Uh, uh, state of New York, the government of the United States or any of the United States, any public cooperation or any private shareholder individual. In other words, they can't even lease you out, your labor out to people. Right? All the products that we know that New York State uh, uh, agencies receive like furniture and cabinets and soap and so forth. It comes from prison labor, right? So it's been, the state is benefiting from our labor, right? From incarcerated workers. Well, and so there's two things that need to be happening here in regards to this I idea of what we're trying to achieve. One, one we want to change the name of our, uh, or the identity of the individuals who are being incarcerated, right? We want to stop calling them prisoners, stop calling them inmates, stop calling them uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, What's the other words they have for them? Uh, cons, right? Cons, and et cetera, right? We want to prevent that from happening, right? Because why? They're workers. They're workers. You know, they don't identify themselves as workers, okay? The state identifies them as workers, so they put them on the work, right? So we're saying that what we have in these institutions across this country, right, particularly in New York State, is incarcerated workers, right? They come from the working class. And so by defining them, redefining our, uh, using this language, this language that defines who we are, by redefining this language and saying we're not dealing with prisoners, we're not dealing with inmates, we're not dealing with convicts, that we're dealing with incarcerated workers, creates a social psychological foundation for which guys, women in prison, right, in these slave institutions can gain a skill, gain some understanding of who they are, and return to the community as workers, as workers. Our mental, our thought process determine how we act, right? Thinking precedes action, right? Thinking precedes behavior. 
if we start thinking like a worker, we might be treating ourselves and acting as a worker or an uh, uh, entrepreneur, right, or a business person. You see what I'm saying? Because that's how we've been trained and documented to thinking. At this point in time, we've been documented for 150 years, 150 years, been documented to think as a slave, right, and been treated as one, right, right? So the name prisoner is equivalent to that of a slave. Why? The law says that. That's what Jalil says. Right, the exception clause in the law says, except for those who have been duly convicted of a crime. Can we treat as slave? Ruffin versus Commonwealth is a case, right? North Carolina versus Jones is a case. And in each of these Supreme Court cases, they informed that prisoners are, quote unquote, slaves of the state. All right? So what's our job? Our job is to end slavery. Now, we have two courageous, two courageous legislators right, elected officials who wrote these bills and are championing these bills to come into law, to end compulsory labor and ensure guys and girls and women in prison get minimum wage for their work, for their labor, right? And what does that do? It allows us to be able to contribute to our families, to contribute to our, your communities. You, hey, hey, KK, you know how much you was hustling inside building to make make a dollar? You know what I'm saying? You make a dollar, make a dollar out of 15 cents. You know what I'm saying? The kind of work that you was doing, like the kind of house you was doing while you was inside, right? Well, we need to train. We need to be able to build that kind of training outward, right? We need to make it manifest as this is the idea for what a guy go or woman go into the penitentiary. They will come out as a better person than when they went in, right? We're not going to have them come out in penitentiary still as the slave mentality. You get what I'm saying? Trying to get over with the slave mentality, which more often than not hurts our community. Our community continues to hurt our community. All right? So, what we're doing, we're building a campaign, right, here in Rochester. I'm in Rochester right now. So I'm building up a, a family and friends of incarcerated workers committee, right? And we're going to push the 13 forward campaign, right? Family and friends of incarcerated workers. Now, keep this in mind, right? And this is why important for me to be on your, on your, on your podcast, because you reach at least maybe 50, 60 uh, formerly incarcerated uh, our, our comrades, brothers and sisters in, 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 in our community, right? All right? I need them. I need them to jump on this, right? Why? Because the family and friends incarcerated workers have the power, will have the power to change the entire system. Now, let's look at this. If these two bills don't come to law, we make these bills come to pass into law, you know what it's going to do? It's take the money, the incentive out of the penal system, right? Make the corporation want to go someplace else because they can't make that money like they used to. It's free labor. You see what I'm saying? We take it, so we're challenging the system on totality, right? Not only that, it makes it difficult for them to send people to penitentiary in the first place because they can't make no money off of me anymore, right? So we challenge the entire system. We're going to create a new environment, a new d dynamic in terms of issues of crime and punishment. That's the long term. Can you see that? Can you envision that? Right? All right. Because we're challenging the incentive, the monetary incentive of keeping this system as it is. Important. So we got to give, we got to give kudos to the two legislators, Mari and Epstein, right? Who put it together, put these two bills together. Now we got to build a campaign, a statewide campaign to push for this thing to happen. And I need my I need my brothers and sisters out there who are uh, down on the rocks, down the streets. Hey, yo, we got millions of people who are formerly incarcerated, right? I don't want a whole million. Give me 100,000. That's all I want. Give me 100,000. Give me 50,000, 50, right? So we can go up to Albany and say, yo, we want these bills passed, right? We want to enact, and we want Hochul to, to sign these bills. And we'll change the fabric, change the fabric of, uh, of, of penal slavery in New York State. And if we do it in New York State, you know if you do New York State, it'll replicate across the country. Now, five states has already done so. Five states have taken out slave uh, 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 slave uh, uh, um, concepts right out of their constitution, right? Penal slavery out of their constitution, right? Let's make let's make uh, 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 New York the next one, the next one. And if New York does it as a trend center, as a trend center, it'll go across the country. All right, so. Uh, I'm prepared to send anybody who wants this information, send me that email, 
information, send me the email address. I send them a copy of the video. I send them a copy of these documents. Okay, and I give them uh, uh, what I'm doing here in, in New York State, uh, building up what, what we call friends, friends and families of uh, incarcerated workers. Right? All right. You see this here? Let me see if I put it up here. Right. Right. This is yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Shake. Let me. Let me put it up for you. Hold on. All right. Cool. And, and which one is that? The family that in which one is that? Yeah, that's a family, uh, a family and friends and incarcerated workers. All right, I'll put that up right now. Hold on. Okay. And cool. and and just for every gift to provide some backdrop, um, you know, and so the, the elder, the elders up here right now, you know, with the aim to literally abolish the Thirteenth Amendment, the clause in the Thirteenth Amendment, which states that those who have been duly convicted are slaves of the state, and he. Um, the shake in this case, he quoted some Supreme Court cases, which actually confirm that, which make uh, pr you know, formerly, in, formerly incarcerated individuals or, or those who are incarcerated individuals, you know, if you're on parole or whatever case may be like that, you're still technically a ward of the state, right? That's technically, right. right? So what what these Supreme Court cases have done are they have actually um, confirmed and agreed that if you've been duly convicted of of a crime. Then you are technically a state, a slave. Excuse me. So what has happened in the state of New York, as is, has been taking place in many states in the in the in the union, in this country, is that um, individuals are working below wages. So where we think individuals on the streets are not being paid enough money to be able to pay their bills on a daily basis, individuals who are incarcerated, our family members, our brothers, our our sons, our daughters, our mothers, our fathers, our uncles, our aunts, our friends, our comrades people who we left behind are still sitting behind the wall being forced and subjected under coercion as the Sheikh just described those who refuse to basically work and things like that then they can either be written a misbehavior report they can be placed on keep lock um that can then have adverse effect on their they're being released early among other challenges that these individuals are faced but another challenge is that individuals are actually being paid pennies on the dollar and while they're being paid pennies on the dollar for their work, their hard work, these corporations who are inside, who has partnered with the New York State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision in this case, are actually making millions and millions of dollars. So they're exploiting the slave like conditions of our people who are still confined to those behind those prison walls. So it's up to us being that we're out here. So either accept the fact that that's going on and don't do anything about it and, and, and say, hey, you know what? Who cares? Right. These guys are in prison who who get who, who gives a hell. Right. Or for those individuals like us who feel some way about that. If you have any inkling in your heart that, you know, you feel a certain way about that, like, hold on, people are really, really being exploited in there. We can do something about that. Right. And, and what we can do about that is we can organize, we can galvanize our, ourselves, our communities. We can start educating ourselves and we can get behind these this legislation that um Mary and Epstein have 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 um put forth so that they can they can literally abolish that in 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 the, in the, in the state's constitution and then it can probably lead to something much more greater down the line. But that's the aim. That's why we're here today talking about this, educating everybody. And I'm gonna put up what the what the what the shake wants us to put up. Mikey, is there anything let me, just, let me just let's give us some more context on that. Um, okay. Okay. As far as when slavery was first abolished, the, the, they used that to appease the Confederates and to bring the Union and the Confederates together, the North and the South together. Because what would happen when you were, when, when slavery was first abolished, they would just charge you for crimes and put you back on the same plantation that you came from. They would say, hey, hold up. You owe me money. You have to come back and work on my same plantation that you came from as a slave. This was this was legal. They were putting people black on plantations after slavery, after slavery was, was, was first abolished. They would they would keep doing this. And what happened was the slave owners did it so much that the government said, hold up. This is when they came with the 13th Amendment. And said you only can be a slave to the state and not to personal um companies or personal and personal owners. Just to give a little 
Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, that was a black law, right? Yes. That was yes, one of the black it's called, it's, called, it's called black codes. It was a black code. Black codes. Black after codes. the 13th Amendment, they had the black codes. Then after the black, black codes, they had Jim Crow. Then after Jim Crow, they got mass incarceration. So everything has been back in, this, back in the slave system. And it is the same people yeah. that they're putting into slavery. Right. It's the exactly same right. the same groups and the same communities that they over policing. Um Absolutely. something that we um studied together in um in Shawonga. Um what's her name? What's her name? Um what's the book we read over there that we studied? The study group we had on Moshe? What's that? Jim Crow? Crow? That was the, the Jim, Jim, Crow. Jim Crow, right? Michelle Alexander. Yeah. Um crimes are not committed more in white or black areas, but they just focus more on our areas, especially drug use and all those crimes. They 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 focus more on black areas, and that's they over police our areas. And this is how you got a disproportionate of black and brown bodies in prison as opposed to white bodies, which is the majority of the nation, because they over policed our communities. That's a fact. No, and not, not, the sitting sin was, was worse in our communities as well. Right. Taking taking consideration that it costs more money to keep a guy in prison than it has the money for a tuition to take a guy to Harvard University. Four years of Harvard University. You know what I'm saying? So what does that tell us? It tells us that our bodies are expendable. That our bodies is used for labor, right? Not for education, not for uh, higher, higher uh, growth and development in, in the social order. Our bodies is used as it had been used for the last 400 years, right? And they just changed the name, changed the game, changed the, 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 the idea of the game, but it's the same thing, right? It's slavery. Now, let me read, let me read it for you right, right quick, right? This is what the 13th Amendment says. So we know specifically what it says. It says, neither slavery or involuntary servitude, except as punishment for a crime, whereof the party has been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States, or any place subject to their jurisdiction. An exception clause, except been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States. It shall exist in the United States. Slavery shall exist in the United States for those who are duly convicted of a crime. Now, let me say this. The Constitutional Amendment against, is against several international charters, specifically the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which Article 4 states that no one shall be held in slavery or servitude Slavery and the slave trade shall be prohibited in all of these forms, in all of these forms, right? And so, again, we have two courageous legislators who put in two bills, right, and who have the capacity of these, both these bills is, is uh, uh, enacted, right, passed and enacted. It will end penal slavery in New York State, period. That's a fight we should be in. And I, and I, think, and I think it's important that we understand, like, like why we have to be on the front lines for that. Because, you know, to, 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 to Jalil's point, by abolishing that, these corporations would then now have to rethink how individuals are being compensated for their labor. And then this empowers individuals who are unfortunately under those circumstances. Because one of those, one of, of, of the recommendations or demands that in this case, the legislators are, are allowing us to to um, put forth to these to these corporations and to to the Department of Corrections is that we sh you know individuals should have an opportunity to be able to form their own unions, and exactly. this is important. Like individuals need to be empowered because if they are at a disadvantage while being incarcerated, because they they're not able to save the resources to come back out when once they make that transition back out to society, they are already working at a disadvantage. You dig what I'm saying? So. Not empowering those individuals only further emasculates these individuals, and it, it and it then creates this this perpetual process of recidivism that seems to just keep metastasizing. You know, we got to understand how important this is. Like a lot of times, we're always talking about the problems and this, the problem this, and the problem that. But now we have an opportunity to ask ourselves, how can we help resolve a matter, overcome a matter, no longer further the oppression. And it's, you know the, the 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 outright exploitation of individuals who are unfortunately incarcerated, and how we can empower them so that these individuals, when they do get released, they can be in a better position than they were when they went in. And 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 it will, I mean, and, and you know, a lot of those best regarding that. But I'm just saying, in general, it should be no reason why a lot of us are not galvanizing ourselves to try to overcome this particular this particular um 
a law right here. That it should be no reason why 2023 that law is still in the books. No That's reason right. at all. No reason at all. In 2023, hey, 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 kid. In 2023, we should be able to move this thing forward straight up, man, and end penal slavery in New York State. Now, <clears throat> keep it, keep keep this in mind as well in terms of this work that we're doing, right? We're changing the penal philosophy, right? Uh, and how um, people um, are. Jalil, I don't want to um interrupt. You. I just want to ask you one thing. Yes, my brother. Um, isn't that a a constitutional law? So we will have to go to Washington D.C. to get that changed. And not New no, York State, right? No, no. See, see, the thing about the Fourteenth Amendment is that we have what we call state rights. You, you see what I'm saying? So the Fourteenth Amendment permits the state to have their state rights, and in this instance, they can nullify the federal law by enacting their own laws. You see what I'm saying? And like they did with like they did with weed, like they did with weed, as an example. It's exactly right. And so we can change the entire system uh, by 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 changing the, the law and the way the law is enacted here in New York State. We're saying that we're not going to adhere to the 13th Amendment. We're going to say that penal slavery in New York State is abolished, right? We're going to take the mantle of Frederick Douglass. We're going to take the mantle of Harry Tubman. We're going to take the mantle of the, 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 the mantle of John Brown, those who have fought to abolish slavery, right? They almost finished it. They almost completed it, but they didn't, right? The state was tricky, real tricky, and they put it into a penal code, right? And now they have slavery in a penal code. All right, real tricky, real tricky. They knew this money was involved. Like the state knew that, okay, we're going to abolish it, that individuals cannot hold other people as property, chattel slavery, right? But the state can, right? Because they know there's money involved. We can still make money off these Africans, off these black bodies, right? Off their misery. And they've been doing it for 400 years. And now we come to a point in time in history. Right? Where we raise our consciousness, raise our understanding of the system, where we can say, hey, we're going to end this. We're going to end it finally. And all, as the Declaration of Human Rights says, in all of its forms, we're going to end penal slavery. We're going to end slavery in, in the United States. Right? And if we do so, right, you know that's going to have a replicates all around the world. Right? We're taking the lead. Come on now. Let's do this. Right? What, what, what were you, you going to say? You were speaking about the call of action. I put it up here right now. What, what, yes. what specifically were you referring to? Shay? Okay, now uh, read, read, read uh, uh, what I'm saying here. Okay, this is family, friends of incarcerated workers. This is what I'm organizing here in Rochester. Any of your comrades, any of our brothers who live in Rochester, formerly incarcerated, who live in Rochester, get with me on on December 22nd, next Thursday. Next Thursday, I'll be having a meeting, a general meeting. Right of all our people, all our progressives in Rochester. Right, we're gonna be having at at 1392 Culver and Merchant at Citizen Action Office. 1392 Culver and Merchant. Right at 6:30 on Thursday. That's December 22nd. Right, get there, be there, join me, help me, so we can help ourselves. Put that in right. the chat for us. Um, um. Shake, text me that address. Text me the address so I can put it into the um the chat for me. All right, all right, I'll do that. I'll do that right now. Yeah, text it to me so I can put it okay. in there. I, I have all the information in there. Um, yeah, man. Um, and and so and so um and and Mikey, thank you for um for that too because I was going to say let's just put it up in there and all that. Um, yeah. So you know we we definitely are at a point now where we're doing everything in our power to, to to not only speak about this this topic this is not just one of those speak about topics right um we've for those of us who've been incarcerated we know how demoralizing it is to have to wake up to go to programs or you know to to also you know have to be in a situation where you only getting literally like what was it when we was up there like 14 cents 15 uh, cent an hour 15 cent an hour something to that extent right um that that's very demoralizing um, but we also have to think about those individuals who we left behind. Um, it's individuals that still live right now who's also going through that, right? Um, so that's something to think about, man. Like, you know, we're, we're, if we don't do anything, then it's as if we're like allowing for that that law to, to remain on the books. And right now we have, and, and not, not that I identify with any political party in this case, but the reality is that the governor is a Democrat. And there is control over both houses right now. I mean, you know, both branches on the state level in New York. So this is the ideal time for these laws to be pushed. You know what I mean? Because 
outside of that, you know, we were living in the Pataki time, it, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. You think what I'm saying? Like, you know, because we know that getting them to try to do something of that that magnitude literally be slim to none. So now that we we have like the wind blowing in our favor, um, it's incumbent upon us to act upon that. Listen, if you just pulling up for the first time, please subscribe to We Locked In. I'm your host, Moshe. I'm here with my brothers, Mikey B and KK. We're here with our esteemed elder, Jalil Mutakim, and we're talking about um, abolishing prison slavery inside of New York State prisons. So, Shake. Oh, oh, yo, let me say one thing before you before you go back to him, right? Yeah. Yo, I was I went to I was in prison for 27 years, right? And all y'all brothers, you know, Jalil did 44. All y'all 49, 49, 49, brother, 49. 49, my God. 49. 49 years. 49, you know, y'all all did. As long as I was in prison, I came home, you know, everything would cost more. It was 15 cents all 27 years I was in prison. It never was raised. It never went up with inflation. Nothing ever changed. As long as I was in prison, we got 15 cents an hour. I mean, unless you got other jobs with higher grades. But the base was always 15 cents. And so how long was that going on? Was it like that since the 70s? Yes. Yes. It was 15 since the 70s? Yes. At one, at one point it was well, no, at one point it was it was eight cents. Wow. Eight cents. Right. That's horrible. Wow. Yeah. All the inflation, everything went up. Everything went up, and they still get the same 15 cents since the 70s. All right. Right. So now this challenge, right, is not just the New York State. It's for this. It's to, it's to the Constitution, right? Yes. Well, well, first, 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 what Jalil to Jalil's point, we're in New York State, and through the Fourteenth Amendment, this affords us an opportunity to be able to. Each state has their own their own laws. Each state is governed by their own set of laws, right? And in this case, they can make their own laws as long as they are consistent with federal law so this is not the third the, the 13th amendment of the of the united states constitution is a federal law right that's that's on the federal level love, but, yeah. but new york state and some of the states they copied their legislations their legislations are uh, the constitutions they copy they mirror the federal governments as well and what jalil was saying is that the the clause that the language that's stipulated inside of the state's constitution in new york Mirrors the, on the federal level as well, so it, it condones and it makes uh, okay. uh, it makes um, permissible um, slavery inside of New York State prison systems as well. Yeah. Now we actually see if we can just get this thing popping on a state by state level first. You know, right? That's right. Yes, yes, yeah. and then now we can we can build a national a national some national momentum because it's already it's already a discussion that's being had right now. We already live in the United States of America where case. You know, I can't remember his case, bro. But there was a brother that actually, like, no, you know, like, you know, being in a box, you just read cases, legal cases, and I ran across a case where someone actually took that issue, right? Not this, not the, not the state of course amendment, but saying that the charges was brought against him was based off of that, right? Like it was slavery, like the, like the drug things, and he won it based off of that. Like that was his issue, and he wow. won. And he won the one thing was what, what they showed was how when 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 how slavery abolished and how certain charges were trumped up. So now if you was a free slave and you can't find nothing to eat and you stole a you you seen a chicken on the road and you grabbed the chicken, right? So they made it they actually started making those to actually to Yeah. Yeah. Put, put the slaves back into slavery like if you did that and then he took he went from the historical perspective from that showing the time difference right from every type of charge when it first started first charge was first implemented robbery stealing whatever right how it was first put into practice and then showing the showing the disparity between now if a white person had got caught with it Oh, there was like almost like damn a casualty, like damn we ain't mean for them to get caught up in it. But how the time, you no, know, how it varies, and he brought it all the way up into present time. So he went back to like the eighteen hundreds and brought it up until uh, when was this case? Cases, I believe. Well, he just was. He just let me just say he was just very fortunate to get in front of her. <laughs> he, oh, money. 
he actually won. No, that's what I'm saying. He was fortunate. He was fortunate. And, and that just, just, very rarely are you gonna are you gonna basically sit in front of a of a far right wing Republican judge, right? <laughs> and say, hey, listen, man, you know, I'm a descendant, I'm a descendant of my, my predecessors who who these laws were unjustifiably uh, uh, forced upon us. And my reason for for robbing that bank was because you know you know you know I think that that is probably a way so for he did, now he did, he did, he didn't rob a bank but he showed the disparity between the charges and it was with remember when they started the thing with the um Rockefeller drug laws and how they saying it was draconian and boom, boom. so he showed it through that and used slavery as his argument yes. And the judge who granted it because the, it, it was clear, the evidence was clear, how everything was brought out was clear. And the judge, I wish, I wish we had that case, man, so we could speak more I, to that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, let us let us read this call to action. All right, it says family and friends of incarcerated workers committee proposal. It is proposed that to ensure the New York State Legislature vote for and enact into law the In Compulsory Labor Act and the Fairness and Opportunity for Incarcerated Workers Act, it is necessary to organize the family and friends of incarcerated workers in support of the committee's goals and objectives. The goals are, the goals and objectives of the Friends and Families of Incarcerated Workers Committee is to change the narrative by committing to building a campaign in New York State that ultimately leads to forging a movement to abolish prison slavery in all of its manifestations and forms. In addition, the FFIWC will organize family and friends of incarcerated workers to join Citizen Action of New York for the specific purpose of winning an increase in incarcerated workers' minimum wage and to ensure fairness and opportunity for incarcerated workers. The committee is tasked with doing outreach to the family and friends of incarcerated workers, as well as other organizations and activists, engaging them in the strategies and activities to move this determination forward. This grown committee will then use their collective power to enact legislators, legislations, excuse me, and lobby them to not only support the bills, but to partner with us and strategically champion these bills until they are enacted as law. Now, the that's legislation, good. That's good. Know, that's you, good. you want to say, say something regarding that? No, I just want to say that that is the golden objective for building. I want to build a uh, statewide, right? And we yes. know we need to have the families and friends, right? Because they're the ones who's, who's directly impacted. Uh, by this incarceral system of penal slavery, right? And so when we raise your education and their understanding that we want our loved ones home, right? We want our, our, our mothers and our fathers and our, uh, and our, and our daddies, uh, uh, we want them home. We want our, our brothers and sisters home, right? And the way that, one way that we can do so is to change the dynamic of how the system holds them, right? Because believe you me, if we change this law, listen, we got 36,000, about 40,000 uh, people in, in prison in, in New York State right now, in the penal state system in, in, in New York State right now, right? You change these laws, it's gonna go down about 15,000, right? Uh, 10,000, okay? Cause they don't wanna put all these people in the penitentiary and allow us to make this kind of money. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, uh, guys might be wanna throw a brick that they come in the penitentiary and get a job. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. See, we change the dynamics, man. Uh, what it is to, to be, be to be brought into a, the criminal justice system, all right? And these laws, it, it can't happen, right? But it can only happen if we organize ourselves to make it happen. That's always going to happen. And so I'm willing to take the lead. I'm willing to take up front. You know what I'm saying? To take the bulk of the criticism and and all that uh, that leads with the idea that we're challenging the system in its most fundamental uh, capacity to hold people as slaves. All right. I feel well, some. I, I'm not gonna lie. I feel some ways about that, Shay. I'm not gonna lie. That since you've been a teenager, literally standing on the front lines, fighting for our freedom. Uh, that right now, after spending 49 years behind enemy lines, like literally from coast to coast, that you're still talking about being on the front lines. Nah, we can't allow that. I mean, I'm not saying that you will, you're gonna let us allow it, but I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying, I feel some ways about that. All this I, young, I, I, all I, this I, young I, energy, I, no way can we allow for somebody who has. I, I just feel some ways about it. Mikey. Am I saying something that's out outlandish? Or something? Hey, I'm about to put in the chat. I'm in like, Syracuse. I'm an hour away from him, so he got to give me his number. 
Because he know I'm going to be right there. He got to give me his number. I'm an hour away. You got to give me your number, Jalil. Yo, uh, yo. I, I, I got you. I got you, Mikey. You got to give it your mo. You got his number, right? Absolutely. Make sure you text it to me. Yo, I mean, mean yo, Jalil, we got a we got a movement over here, um, on prison reform, um, school commissioners. I got a bunch of workers. I got a bunch of great people I'm working with right now. So I'm gonna put them everybody on to that. Absolutely. And we will connect with you. And we go. We got your back, bro. You already know how we do. You know, saying you know, mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm gonna be there, bro. Don't even worry about that. I'm I'm okay. one hour away from you. You one yeah, hour away. Okay. I love to travel. You are. <laughs> okay, all right, my brother. All right, come on, come on, Mikey. Bring, 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 bring a caravan, Mikey. Bring a caravan. You know that. You know I'm working. I <laughs> love this travel, bro. I'm going to be there. <laughs> you make it happen. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, uh, Mo- Moshe. Right, no, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, like you know, and I, and I, and I feel like, and I understand you obviously feeling this way. I do. I, I, I get it. I'm just, it's too much youthful energy, and. And not for nothing, the youth are, 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 are have always been at the forefront of change, seek, seeking seeking to change their conditions. I mean, Black I, Panther Party, Black Panther Party. When I was when I was when I was sixteen years old, man. When I joined the Black Panther Party, it was a youth movement. But the brothers were courageous. The sisters were courageous, man. They was about the business. They were putting their lives on the line. You know what I'm saying? That's where my spirit. That's where it comes from. Right here, I'm at seventy one years old right now. Seventy one years old, still in the fight, bro. Right? We got the end penal slavery, man. We got to do this. We got, this is historic, man. We can make it happen, right? We got to come together. We got to organize. We got to make this thing happen, bro. Uh, continue to read. Continue to read this so people understand exactly what's going on with it. Yes, this, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I'm reading the legislation portion of it. It says we support the passage and enactment of the Enforced Labor Act. <clears throat> this is Senate Senate Number Three Hundred Eight by Myrie and Assembly Three One Four Four Two by Epstein. And the fairness and opportunity for in, incarcerated workers act, and again, that's that's in the Senate under four one six a, and in the Assembly under three four one a. All right, and I, and the bullet points up under up under this are one to abolish the prison labor exception to slavery for people incarcerated in New York penal slave system in jails to provide the state. Minimum wage for all prison labor. Number three, expressly prohibit the use of force, threats of force, and other threats of punishment as as means to compel the labor of incarcerated people. Number four, mandate basic labor protections for incarcerated workers, including safety or safe and healthy working conditions, workers' compensation if injured on a job, and the right to form of the former union. Number five, ensure that all prison labor enterprises and programs provide quality vocational and occupational training and create viable pathways to employment post release. Now, what's important about that is this that when uh, you, you gain a, a skill, a journeyman as a person or a journeyman and a master, you'll be linked to a union. That were the same skills, same uh, uh, goals and objectives, right? Same occupational work right? while you're inside. You're linked to a union. So that when you get out, you go right into a union, go right into a union and get union wages. Do you know what I'm saying? And moving forward, you buy a house, you buy a home, you, you, know, you take care of your family. You know what I'm saying? With those kind of wages. I'm going to say they're the best wages in the world. But hey, listen, it's better than throwing a brick, you know what I'm saying? Or standing on the corner, risking uh, getting murdered. You know, by your own peers, you know what I'm saying? Based upon some old turf crap, you know, set, uh, 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 setting, what do they call it? What do they call it? Gang setting, something like that? <laughs> Listen, set man. tripping. Yeah, set tripping, you know what I'm saying? You know, come on, man. What are we doing? Right? No, come on. We got to change our mind. We got to change our mindset. We got to change our thinking, man. You know what I'm saying? Because we're perpetuating what the KKK is trying to do to us, right? Yeah. Fact, man. Come on. We got to change our mindset. We got to change our thing. We got to change our behavior. We got to make this thing happen. So this is one way that we, all of us who are commonly understanding the system, who have been engaged in the system, have been impacted by the system, we can challenge the system on a legal tip. And we got two legislators who put themselves up to put their, their, their name on pieces of paper to make this thing happen. Yeah, we can make it happen, bro. Go ahead. Your yeah. conclusion. Yeah, we definitely can make it happen. All right. Let me keep reading it, my brother. All right. 
the conclusion since 1865 with the signing of the 13th amendment of the u.s constitution the general public have been taught that slavery in the united states was abolished however Serious scrutiny of the language of the 13th Amendment informs the general public has been duped on a false narrative in as much as chattel slavery has had been abolished. Penal slavery and servitude was imposed on those who had to navigate their freedom as emancipated slaves through a plethora of new laws called the Black Codes. The Black Co Codes were enacted and implemented to allow the state to extract exorbitant wealth from penal slave labor the black codes established rules regulations and policies that ushered ma many newly emancipated slaves into the penal slave system the black codes were followed by jim crow laws that further instituted segregation and institutional and structural racism leading to mass incarceration the 13th amendment abolished chattel slavery but instituted states penal slavery pursuant to case law in Ruffin versus Commonwealth and Jones versus North Carolina Prisoners Labor Union, Inc. New York State Constitution compels incarcerated workers to work for pennies on a dollar. However, New York State Constitutional Article 1, Bill of Rights, Section 17, establishes the foundation for incarcerated workers to not be compelled to work absent these constitutional rights and guarantees. The penal slavery abolishment activist movement, excuse me, the penal slavery abolishment activist community, including the family and friends of incarcerated workers, has to forge a new narrative to counter the right wing white supremacist philosophy and acts committed to the mass incarceration of black, brown, indigenous and poor people. Our collective determination shall be one of producing conditions that broaden understanding and identifying our incarcerated loved ones as part of the working class. And they must be provided every opportunity for growth and development consistent with the laws of New York State for all workers, no matter their socioeconomic and political status. To join and support this statewide campaign to end compulsory labor and fairness and opportunity for incarcerated workers, contact Jalil Muthi King at Citizens Actions in New York and Rochester. Right. And my, all my information is right there for people to contact me. Yeah, I'm going I'm, to I'm, I'm just copy it and just put it in the chat. All right, All right, cool, cool. All right, that's the work we need to do, bro. And that's the work for 2023. So if y'all gonna make resolutions on New Year's, right? Make resolutions to be a prison abolitionist. Make that make that part of your resolution, right? That 2023, I'm gonna be a prison slave abolitionist, right? And then we're gonna abolish uh, slavery in New York State uh, in 2023, right? If you do that, listen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in my thinking, will bless you. Why? Because Muslims has an obligation to free the slave. Right? Muslims has an obligation to fight against turmoil and oppression wherever we may find it. Right? That's our goal and objective. And for those of us who are right-minded thinking, right, who believe in morality, some degrees of morality and ethics, right, we know that slavery is wrong. That's right. There's no way we can justify it. None, right? And so, therefore, we have an obligation based upon our own understanding uh, to fight against the system of slavery, involuntary servitude, compulsory labor in the penal system. And so, uh, that's that's the argument. I provide you the information. How we're moving forward, you can learn about Thirteen Forward uh, by googling it, Thirteen Forward, right? But in terms of work that we're doing here in Rochester, Family and Friends and Incarcerated Workers Committee. We'll be starting off on Jan on December 22nd, that's next Thursday, 6.30 p.m., right, at 1392 Mer Colbert and Merchant Street here in Rochester. And if your comrades, if your brothers and sisters out here in the streets, right, and you know, and you're out here in Rochester or the surrounding areas, hey, come and get it. Come hit me up. Let's do this thing. Let's put this thing together. Let's that's make right. Rochester. Remember now, Rochester is the city of Frederick Douglass. Come on, man. It's the home of Frederick Douglass. Come on, that's the home that's of Frederick That's the legacy right there. Come on, man. How are we not going to be abolitionists? That's right. right. How are we not going to be abolitionists? We got to be abolitionists. We got to raise that legacy up. Come on now. Let's get work. Let's get to work. Listen, man, this is the elder speaking, you know, and, and you know, one thing that we were taught when we was babies, man, that's was good. respect right. our elders, man. This is somebody who is giving us sound advice. We should be on the front lines, putting this work in, doing what we got to do. And let me tell you something. We ain't doing nothing wrong. So I don't want anybody to get the impression that somehow standing up for what's right is wrong. 
Don't ever let nobody tell you that when you stand up for what's right is wrong. All right. Because one thing we know that the media, the far right would like us to believe is that, listen, when you say something that's right, that you got to be silent, that you got to keep it to yourself. Nah, we have these platforms for a reason. You dig what I'm saying? We should be utilizing these platforms for what's right and exact. We left a lot of people behind the wall. We know that the United States of America incarcerates millions. They lead the world in incarcerating its citizens. We know that already. All right. We, we, we can't talk about we got our mans behind the wall, our comrades, our peoples, but we're not on the front lines fighting for what's right and exact for them. So we got a moral obligation to stand up for what's right. And we're calling upon everybody out here, individuals that subscribe to the channel. Please, man, educate people, man. Share this. All right. But not only share it, man, like it, but do more than that, man. Tell somebody, listen, man, we could do something about this, man. Get in contact with the elder that's been speaking. Try to get in contact with me, Mikey BKK, individuals who you know personally. And we could do something about this, man. If y'all really serious about changing these conditions. I mean, I know, Shake, is there anything you wanna you wanna leave us with uh, uh before 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 you roll up out of here, my brother? Uh only thing I'm gonna leave you with this here, man, that I believe in us. Right? As I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have provided us the opportunity to be better men, to be better women, right? And so therefore we should not take that for granted, right? We should use what blessings that we have to ensure that these blessings grow. And how do these blessings grow? By giving uh, giving to others, right? By sacrificing, by charity, by, by Seneca, right? Uh, uh, we can do that, right? And Seneca is a smile. Seneca is telling you, brother, man, don't step this way, step this way. Seneca is, is a way that you enhances your own blessings by sharing what your blessings are with others, right? If it's just a piece of bread, right? If it's no more than a, than a bean, right? If it's no more than a wisdom, a thought of wisdom, right? That changes a person's mind to do from wrong to right, right? That's what we're doing here. We're going to grow some blessings, bro. We're going to, well, listen, we're going we're gonna to be the blessed family, okay? Uh, by the work that we're doing. And listen, I, you all, the thing that you guys are doing, this podcast, is tremendous. It's a force. It's a force in nature, right? And that in itself, you all being blessed for providing this opportunity from where we can gather together, gather our minds together, gather our heads together, and find a movement, build a movement that addresses our issues for the betterment of our people. How can you ask for anything better than that? Wow. Mikey, KK, man. My brothers, y'all, y'all wanna y'all wanna add to that before we before we roll up out of here. We got a few minutes left. Yeah, I I, I was sit, I was just sitting back watching, man. Jalil, man, sound like him, man. Sorry, I didn't... what happened, bro? He always nah, listen. Bob, Bob. Don't, don't worry about it, man. What, that's Bob, that, that's Bob, Bob, problems, but he that's what you need. Man, you need dollars. You need hundred dollars, man. What you need, man? He get you Wi Fi. What's going on, man? We got we got to raise some funds, man. Get you Wi Fi. What's up? My laptop, but I'm on my phone, and people hit my phone up right now. That's 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 why. But it's always a pleasure, man. It's always a pleasure, man. I love just seeing that you got that same fire and passion. You know what I'm saying, and I remember, man. You just you you just motivate me to do more, man. Even more so, and it's like good. Uh, man, I, don't... I appreciate, I appreciate, bro. Listen, man, I don't know. I got love for our people, man. Well, I, I know bottom that. line, bottom line, I got love for our people, man. I, you see, for me, I know who we are. You see what I'm saying? I know who we are. I know what the law created. You know what I'm saying? I know that, right? A lot didn't create no slaves, right? Not out of us. You know what I'm saying? We was create, we was made to be slaves, right? But law did not create slaves. You know what I'm saying? When we get back to a law. We get back to our divine nature, you know what I'm saying? Then I, I know who we are. See? Hey, bro, listen, man. There are black people all around this world, all around this planet. You know what I'm saying? All around the world is black people, people of African descent. You know what I'm saying? And the majority of us are still in the same condition they was from 1493 when the, 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 the doctrine of discovery was, was, was promoted by the uh, 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 the papal bull of 1493. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Alexander, Ale- uh, Pope Alexander. You know what I'm saying? When well, he told the, the Spanish and uh, and the Portuguese to go out in the world, and if anybody's not Christian, to conquer them. Right? To invade those countries and conquer them. They've been doing that ever since. You know what I'm saying? You know, so this is this is the idea. The the the, the doc- see, I don't go on, I'm going to another thing, but the doctrine, <laughs> 
The Doctrine of Discovery. Yeah, you can go ahead. You can go into some, some other stuff. Listen, listen, man. The Doctrine of Discovery morphed into the Monroe, the Monroe Doctrine in the United States. All right, all right, and, and, and created and, and created a whole new idea of, uh, of of expansion and imperialism. Right, the Monroe Doctrine. Right, uh, the uh, uh, the whole idea of manifest destiny. Manifest okay. destiny evolved out of the idea of the uh, uh, the Doctrine of Discovery. You see, and that, how the hell do people gonna think that they have manifest destiny to control the planet, right? We'll give them the right. We'll give them the right, right? And they've been doing it for 400 years. We're putting the end to this. This is this, this, done. I'm, I ain't listening. It's done. It's done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not for me, right. for my babies. Right? For right. my grandchildren. You know what I'm saying? We're doing the work that they won't have to do. We do the work today, they ain't have to do it tomorrow because it's right. done. All right? right? So it's generational. And that's where that fire, that's where you see that fire from, Mikey. In fact, um, right. Jalil, you know, you've been a teacher. You've been doing this fighting for for. I salute you, man. Um, right. you know, we always going whatever. You know, we gonna be here. You know, I met you in prison. Um, you came into our classrooms. You taught us. You always. You never was scared to shy away from teaching the peoples, whoever, homies. You know, neutral, whatever. You came and you taught all of us. So I respect you for that. And you doing the same thing. I got a lot of respect, a lot of love for you and Herman Bell. And all the brothers, all the elders that I, I had the um. Okay. Let me just add one more thing. One more thing before I get out of here, right? Comrade Mutulu Shakur was released today. Yeah. Was released today. Yeah. Okay. That's the people, stepfather. That's, right. that's the stepfather of Tupac Shakur. The stepfather of Tupac Shakur. He is the champion of black acupuncture in this country. He was released today. Okay. That's a win for us. That's, right. That's a win for us. Thank you. Yeah, that's a fact. Definitely a win. Oh, man. This, yeah, you know, it never ceases to amaze me, man, the effect you be having on me. That's what I mean. You, you meet, one of, when you meet one of yours, man, one of your elders. You know what I'm saying? That'd be the thing, John Little, man. It'd be so big brothers out here, man, when we finally come across you was such as yourself, man, just the impact that you had on so many people's lives, man, mine as well. Well, I'm just one individual. I need all of us together collectively, <laughs> right? All of us together collectively, that's power. That's, that's power. That's, that's right. People. Empower that's right. the people. We got to power the people. And that's, and that's we got to come together. We got to unify. Hold on, hold, hold on Shake. Reason. Hold on, Shake. Hold on, Shake. Hold on, shake, Mikey. Mikey, Mikey left because you know Mikey get real emotional with stuff like so. So he left us. He left us. He had to wipe away the tears, right? So come on, come on. we love. I love. I love when my brother start crying and he, he put his camera on so nobody. Ain't nothing wrong with bro. Hey, hey, Mikey, I cry in the movies, man. I'm good, man. I'm good. Me too. My I'm wife good, too, bro. You heard? <laughs> nah, it's just a blessing. It's just a blessing to have our elders, you know. Yeah, it is. Man. Yo, let me tell you something. We just, we just listen, you know. And this is something that's important. You know, and I apologize for cutting you up. Please, please forgive me, um, Shake. We're, we're losing our elders. This is something that's very important. We're losing our elders. Um, and when they go, they're gone. Um, we have their memories. But what's most important is we should have the lessons that they bestow upon us so that we can keep their legacies alive. Um, our brother here is 71 years old. Go ahead, y'all. I apologize, man. Well, it's good, bro. I'm going. I'm going to put uh, uh, in the chat uh, where people can get my book. Yeah, put your yes, book please. in the chat, man. Yeah, put yeah. put all that information in the chat so that everybody can get get your um your books and everything like that. So definitely, we want to have all this information up. Um, this is very important. You know, you know, anytime I'm I'm talking to the brother, man, we we always got to move, man. Uh, you know, I remember when 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 we met years ago in Auburn and. I, I was writing an essay called Africanism, right? So my, <laughs> my 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 reason for writing it was because I kept seeing all of these doctrines that were written by by individuals that were not of us, right? So I said I'm gonna write my own doctrine, right? My own theory. I'm gonna come up with my own thought processes and things like that. But I showed it to Jalil when I got to Auburn, and I wasn't able at that time to be able to like put my passion into my words because I wasn't really articulate like that with my words. Um, I read a lot, was a voracious reader, but I just wasn't a great writer. And his advice to me was two words. He said, keep writing. Keep writing. Keep writing. Right. Not, not, not to say 
that the passion wasn't there, that the idea wasn't there, but he he used it as a way to say, keep writing. You know what I mean? And I think that that was profound for me because, you know, he didn't discourage me in, in those words. And I never forgot that, Shake. That to me meant a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So it's was, it was something I held on to, man. But I really, really appreciated that, man. But okay. listen. Thank you. Did Thank I, you, I, put that, did I even put that in the chat yet? Oh, I didn't even put it in the chat yet. Oh, there it is. All right, there it is. Yes, yes. Your book at, why you ain't put your book in there, uh, Jalil? No, nah, I'm putting uh, it right now. It All right. It is right there. <laughs> Yeah, and that book right there, We Are Own Liberators. Listen, I had that book in Southport. Let me tell you something. I read that book so much. I read the book so much that the pages came out the book. Like, I, I had it like, that's, you know, listen, we had classes on that. We used to go in on that while we was up in You see books like that, you know they good, you heard? <laughs> yeah, Mikey, I'm telling you, that was one of my favorite books. And, um, yo, listen, man. All right, I, I got I to gotta go. I got to break out. All yeah, right? man. Listen, gotta, we can talk all another, night, but, you know, the shake out engagement. of me. I got. I text you. I text you. You got my text, right, Jalil? Let me let me look. Yeah, yeah, Mikey B. I got you. All right. All right. So lock me in, man. That's me right there. Lock me in. You see a lot of me. Right. I'm right here. Love you, KK. I'm gonna see you in twenty seconds, Mikey. You gonna see a lot of me. All right, bro. You gonna be All calling right, Shay like, yo, get Mikey. He won't go back <laughs> and serve you. <laughs> okay. All right, bro. No. You too, gay. Okay? No, I'm smiling, brother. I love you too, big bro. I love you too, big bro. I'll call you people. I swear I'm gonna go. People, my guy. Yo, Mikey, KK, I love y'all, man. Um, y'all already know what it is. Um, I thought we were supposed to be doing the other stuff, but um, I was, I was at, I was yesterday. I was at the what's name anyway. It was my mom was everywhere. <laughs> it was crazy. This is better. This was a lot better, y'all. Nah, don't worry about it. I, I was in Fort Greene last night. Them kids over there had me. Yo, it was crazy yesterday. The kids, the kids is nuts. I love, I love them, bro. Yo, I love y'all, man. Yo, love you too, bro. Yo, send, send the missus. So you like our regards, man. Subscribe, pass the song, let them know what's going on, man. Yeah, share this, man. We locked in, man. That's a true elder, man. He always, he know, he been fighting for, for his people more than, longer than we've been alive. You know this, what I'm saying? This is what y'all supposed to be running up, man. Running he been up. fighting for his people more than we've been alive since he was we, a kid. We ain't going to get no views. Bro, give him a little background before we go. A little background. When did All he right. start? When did he join so, the Panthers? So, the, the, so and this is, this is important. The brother joined the Black Panthers. When he was 16 years old. 16, 16 years old. I went to jail when I was 16 years old. Yo, he I, was 16 years old out of the for the Black Panthers. <laughs> and he joined the Black Liberation Army at the age of 18. 18, 19, oh, 18 years old. He was sentenced to 25 years. Crazy, bro. At the age of 19 years old. He was in San Quentin prison at 19 with the with the likes of G Jaga, G Jaga, Geronimo Pratt, and these elders like that, right? And you know, just just it's a lot, man. You know, but the brother was got locked up in 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 seventy one and came out, man, forty nine years later. You know, you know, for fighting for the the liberation of black people in America. That's it. His whole life, his his entire life, and he's seventy one. And I think it's so disrespectful that at seventy one years old, our elder is saying to us. And I, I love our elder, but he's telling the young brothers, I'm at the forefront of this. Where y'all at? I think to me that is so freaking nuts. So yeah, that, that's 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 a hard one to swallow right there. That's but. a hard one to swallow. And I don't how much I love him. I'm like, no, you done did enough. He like, nah. I but I got some, I got some people. We're gonna <laughs> we gonna link it up. You know, I'm a you know I'm gonna be there, but yeah, you I'm you, right you, here, you know what I'm saying? You but, you you Mikey B, aka the loop. <laughs> you are, yo, listen, bro. I got some people, so you know, <laughs> I'm a definitely he gonna be good. You know what I'm saying? I'm an hour away, you heard? So you know what I'm saying? I'm glad when I heard that. I didn't know, I forgot when he was writing his books, he had a big movement in Buffalo and Rochester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't there. know he's he was coming there, right man. here though. He's up there heavy. I'm mad. I'm just finding this out, man. We had him up here last time. I'm mad because yo, nah, let me tell you something. I got some worry, sisters, man. you know, y'all know, you know, yes. you, you've been on the phone with him, Mo. Yes, I got some sisters out here and yeah, some they brothers. Ready. They ready to go. They about they they stay in Albany. <laughs> yeah, they they different. They, they live in Albany. They stay in front of the cameras. They out here doing the work. Yeah, so I'm gonna hook them up. I'm gonna hook every. I'm gonna hook that whole thing up, bro. But I'm I ain't gonna lie. I'm mad that I I didn't know that he was right here all that time, bro. That's nah, don't worry about right, that bro. because it, it just wasn't meant at that time. And now you know, so you can act on it now. So whatever, whatever in the past, you know, you can't change that. That's over. But 
you know, you 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 know, we can we can move forward now. Um, but before we step it. out, I just want to say this, bro. The respect I got from him, bro, because you know I knew Herman Bell. I didn't meet him till later. Yes. And yes. it was good that I met him at the time I was at because I was running class in Shawanga and I had it going. So he was able to come in there as soon as he came to the prison. I was able to pull him into the class and get him in front of the homies and had him teaching the homies and everybody else that was in the spot. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was a good and what I really what I really love about him is that he never feared his people. He never turned any of us away, no matter what you was doing. He always came and taught everybody, him and Herman Bell. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They never, they never um turned the blind out of us. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Respectfully. All right, my brothers, man. It's always a pleasure. Uh, I love y'all. Y'all already know. Uh, so everybody that's easy, tuned in, we locked in. I already know we locked in, man. We locked in. We all the way locked in, man. Shout out to everybody from the east to the west, man. Everybody that tuned in to, to We Locked In tonight. This is a classic. Share it, like, subscribe, man. Please get on the front lines with us, man. Y'all already know what we're doing, man. Love y'all, man. Peace. Love you, bro. It's not like him. Peace, bro.